scientists find that earthquake tremors are becoming more frequent thanks to climate change and they're issuing earthquake warnings because of this. And this is by Sean Martin, Express UK. The frequency of earthquakes will likely strengthen and become worse in the future as scientists notice a strong correlation between climate change and tremors. And not only that, but we have to add the fact that we're going into a solar minimum. And every time we go into solar minimums, we have increased earth changes, earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. Now, since 1975, the world has been warming at an alarming rate, scientists stating that the global temperature has risen by roughly 0.15 to 0.20 degrees Celsius per decade per decade. While the figure seems low now, global warming is undoubtedly having an effect on the polar ice caps which continue to melt. Since 1939, the volume of ice in the Arctic, or the North Pole that is, has shrunk by an astonishing a huge amount of 80%. But scientists have warned that this will not just cause sea levels to rise, they'll cause other earth changes as well. The melting ice caps also pose another threat, and that is that they could cause major earthquakes. You remember the video just before this one, a couple of videos before this one, we talked about the glacier on top of the Yellowstone supervolcano area. It had one of the major uh, ice coverages in the uh, glaciation period over the United States. And due to the fact that that has melted and it's no longer pressing on the area of the, on top of the magma chamber, there has been an increase, that's what it caused the increase of eruptions tens of thousands of years ago, and also causing more earthquakes in the area. Now, the team of researchers, so something similar is going on here with the ice caps melting. The team of researchers from the Leibniz University in Hanover investigated a major fault zone running across Denmark over the course of two and a half million years ago to about 12,000 years ago, at the end of the last ice age, that is. They found that as the ice melted, it did have an effect on the sediment deep beneath the surface, which essentially reactivated that fault line according to researchers led by Dr. Christian Brandis. So yeah, this is what we see worldwide. We've noticed that. This is not the first time we hear this. The scientific journal Scientia read, the 115 kilometer long Osning thrust underwent a series of faulting movements over a 140 million year period, ending about 60 million years ago. Quote, the team has shown that movements along this fault also occur very recently. Modeling these structures has enabled Dr. Brandes and his colleagues to demonstrate that the Osning thrust was reactivated at the end of the last glaciation around 12,000 years ago. This fault reactivation was accompanied by earthquakes, which the team identified from the soft sediment deformation structures that developed in this area. Their findings also imply that an earthquake which took place in this region during the autumn of 1612 might have triggered might have been triggered due to the stress changes in the earth's crust caused by a melting ice sheet. The team believed the effect might be something known as glacial rebounding. So that means that once you take the pressure off an area, the earth comes back up again. It's like when you're holding a balloon, you remove your hand and the balloon uh, rises in that area that you removed your hand from. So what this means is that when there is ice, the earth around these freezing patches is essentially constricted, but as the ice melts away, the surrounding zone becomes looser and allows for more seismic activity as tectonic plates move around more easily that way. And as we know, climate change is also having the same effect on volcanic eruptions, according to another study. It's not just the earthquakes. 
is because the tectonic plates are able to move around and do so. And when you have the edges of the of those tectonic plates is where you have fault lines and volcanoes. Now, this is because ice sheets and glaciers can help to maintain the structure of volcanoes and the mountains. Giochino Robert, a PhD student at the University of Clermont Auvergne, said, imagine the ice like some sort of protective layer. When the ice melts away, the mountain is free to collapse. Now, if your mountain is a volcano, you have another problem. Volcanoes are a pressurized system, and if you remove pressure by ice melting in landslide, you have a problem, end quote. Professor David Rothery, geoscientist at the Open University said, this new research nicely demonstrates that if you change the load on a volcanic mountain, for example, by removing some ice, the likelihood of a mechanical collapse and possible ensuing eruption will be slightly increased. Eruptions are triggered by a complex array of factors. He went on to say, I suspect that many eruptions caused by glacial melting might happen eventually anyway, given enough time, but this research shows that warming could increase those chances of eruptions happening sooner rather than later. Now, we do have active volcanic activity under the ice caps as well, North and South Pole, especially in Antarctica, the South Pole, where we have about 91 to 100 volcanoes under the ice caps there. Some of them, especially on the west coast of the Antarctica Peninsula, of the continent of Antarctica, have been active lately, and that is what they say has caused the melting of the uh, uh, ice cap there. Now, the according to Wikipedia, the list of volcanoes in Antarctica, the last known eruptions as well, for example, they have a list of them alphabetically. Let's go to the one that erupted about 5,300 years ago, is the Mount Berlin. And then you have uh, 490 years, 1,000 years ago, Mount Bursi. Then it, the eruption of Deception Island, which was just recently in 1970. We had another eruption just around here last year, in 19, uh, 2018, Mount Erebus. Um, in 1892, plus or minus 30 years, Mount Melbourne. Then you had about 50, 100, 1050 BC, the Pleiades volcano. And uh, then you had 5550 BC about Mount Takahi. So the one that was basically the most recent eruption, where was it? We just read it, um, is Mount Erebus. Elevation is 3,794 meters or 12,144 feet. So you do have, and, we, and they also recently found a uh, new young volcano on the west coast. Mount Erebus, second highest volcano in Antarctica after Mount Sid Sidili, southern most active volcano on Earth. It's the sixth highest ultra mountain on the continent. So we do have active volcanoes. They are causing the uh, ice caps to melt as well because they're causing the runoff. And this just makes things worse because as the ice melts, you have more volcanic activity because we said there's anywhere from 91 to 100 volcanoes under the ice caps of Antarctica. So it's just a vicious cycle, isn't it? So I'll leave links below for you for this. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. 
Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.